All right, common ports for beginners is exactly what I will be covering in this video. Uh, I know a lot of you guys that are really new to this stuff, you might not even know, like, how do we know what services are running? You know, you might have looked at Nmap scans before. Maybe you haven't even heard of Nmap scans. In that case, I will be making a video on that pretty soon. But before I could even jump into, you know, what is Nmap and how do you use Nmap to determine what services are running on a system, I need to explain how do you identify what the services even are in the first place. Now, that is where ports come into play. Now, basically what a port is, uh, is it's, an, it's a way to, uh, to number things. If you think you can think about it, I'm going to really, in layman's terms, break this down. But it's basically part of a, a network socket, which is the IP address and the port number. Now, basically what it is, is it's a number identifier that uh, is commonly associated with a particular service that is running. So if we just break down the whole concept of a server and just think of it as a computer, right? Your computer, right? Your computer can be a server, you know? A server is basically just a device that is serving content to other users that might want to interact with that content, right? So if you are running a piece of software on your computer uh, and serving it up to other users and maybe across the network, maybe on the open internet, you're basically acting as a server, uh, your, your machine is in that scenario. Now, depending on what software uh, that is serving up this service, if you will, right, it will actually listen on a different port. And so, for example, here, I have the top 20 most common ports, right? There's so many different ports. In fact, the ports go from one, port one to 65535, uh, and everything in between, right? That's how many ports there are. But there's certain ones that are way more common than others. And when you're a beginner, you don't have to really rack your brain on trying to memorize tons and tons of ports. As long as you know, I would say like these top 20 and whatever you see additional, uh, you could figure it out. Now, one thing to note is, okay, when I see port 21, for example, it's almost always FTP because the FTP service, uh, it, it doesn't have to, but it almost always runs on port 21. So now that is the other caveat here. A particular service doesn't have to necessarily run on a particular port. You could run any service on any port, but there is a common standard in place for some of these numbers uh, with the corresponding service. So with that being said, Nmap is going to try to predict what services is running on that port, but that might not necessarily be what's actually running there. So just keep it, you know, you know, keep that caveat in mind. But I don't want to, you know, I want to keep things simple because 90% of the time, 95% of the time even, I'd venture to say, uh, the port that you'll see running on a particular port number will correspond to the service that you think it does. Only in very rare scenarios will it not. So here's the numbers that you really need to focus on, right? 21, 22, 23, so on, right? If you know what these are, and you're going to see them so many times that even if you have to kind of think about it, it takes you a minute now, you're going to see these, I promise you, so many times that you're just going to associate, okay, boom, uh, port 80, web server, right? Port 3306, MySQL. You're just going to know that uh, because you're just going to encounter it so much. But, okay, let's let's just step through here. I'll, I'll kind of explain what uh, most of these are, and uh, that will help you further understand what's going on here. So, like I said, anytime you see port 21, it's almost always going to be FTP, file transfer protocol, basically a protocol that allows you to put files on a server or download files from a server, um, right? So, uploading and downloading files to and from a server, basically. SSH, that's the sh uh, secure shell. And it's basically a way to run remote commands on a system, provided that you authenticate normally, right? Uh, using an encrypted channel, so no one can kind of snoop in on what commands you're sending. Now, FTP is unencrypted, so people can see your communication to and from the FTP server um, with this protocol. Uh, but with Secure Shell, with SSH, uh, it is all encrypted. And Telnet... Basically, just like SSH, except no encryption. 
So it is also, it's a very legacy protocol, I will say. It's made for administrative tasks, right? Just like uh, SSH, right? You can remote into systems and run commands on those systems, but uh, it's pretty much never used anymore just because it's a weaker version of SSH, right? It's unencrypted. So people can see all the commands you're sending and the data you're getting back from that server. Now, SMTP port 25 is for email and uh, it is for sending email, I do believe. Yeah, for sending email. There's a different there's different protocols for receiving email. I'll show you that here in a second. Now, 53 is DNS, uh, which is like your domain name service. Uh, domain, domain name server, right? So basically what DNS is, is just what translates IP addresses into host names. So if we didn't have DNS, then you would have to memorize all of the IP addresses to google.com, for example. You couldn't just type google.com in your browser and get there. You'd have to type one of their IP addresses that corresponds to their server, right? So it's a it's a uh, service that is just very useful to us as humans in the way that we process information. Uh, now, HTTP is, the, uh, is any website, right? Uh, now, I will say there is port 80 HTTP and there's port 443 HTTPS. Basically, these are, by all intents and purposes, the same thing, except for the fact that HTTPS uses encryption. It uses SSL. So basically, all SSL is is a way to encrypt your traffic. Because if you're using the standard legacy HTTP protocol, then you know once again, it's unencrypted. Someone, anyone that's on your network can see if they're sniffing the uh, the wire, if you will, they can see all of the data that you're sending to the server and that the server's sending back to you, which this is obviously going to be a problem if you're logging in to a website, right? They could see your password, right? So uh, HTTPS is what is most commonly used today because it encrypts the traffic between you and the web server so people cannot snoop on it. Um, so yeah, that's the only major difference there. Now, POP3, this is actually one of the protocols that is for receiving email, right? Uh, there's also IMAP. That's another one using used for receiving email as well. RPC bind. Uh, this one is a little bit of a weird one. Uh, you can bind different uh, different uh, services here. Normally, when you see RPC bind, there'll be a number of different services that uh, could be bound uh, using the you know RPC protocol. But uh, that is what that one's for. And then MSRPC, it's a it's similar thing. It's the, uh, I believe, the Windows version of, uh, of RBC, RPC, if you will. And uh, 139 is uh, NetBIOS, which is a legacy Windows protocol used for kind of identifying a host name, uh, like a name, computer name to your... Uh, to your machine, it, it matches your machine with a with a computer name. So if you know, like when you log into your Windows box or whatever, you might have named it something like maybe maybe you named it your first name or whatever, right? Well, the NetBIOS protocol is a, it's a pretty legacy protocol, but it actually it, it stores information like this, right? And uh, we covered these two, so let's go down here to four four five. This is actually SMB. So SMB is typically seen in Windows, although there is Linux SMB when it comes to what are known as Samba servers. But usually when you see SMB, it, you're dealing with a Windows server. And I will say as well with SSH, normally when you see SSH, you're dealing with a Linux server, though it, you can use SSH on Windows as well. But that's typically what I would think when I see that. And conversely, when I see this, I would typically assume Windows unless I have information to the contrary there. And basically what that is, is if you ever opened up your file explorer before, you know, this, this thing down here, file explorer, uh, on Windows, you can like, you can view network shares, right? So basically it's a network share that uh, allows you to, and I don't have any set up, otherwise I demo it, but basically all it is, if you ever use NFS on Linux, it's basically the Windows version of that. You can put a bunch of files in a folder and make it a network share, and then anyone with access to that folder on the network can access those files and, uh, you know, upload d different files, make changes to them, whatever they have permissions to do. You can define the permissions, of course. But uh, yeah, it's basically used for that. And traditionally, there has been a lot of serious vulnerabilities with this protocol uh, with older versions of Windows and things like that. So definitely something to keep in mind. And uh, IMAPs, I believe this is, uh, these are both, uh, 
IMAPs and POP 3S, these are both things that uh, have to do with, you know, email, uh, receiving email, right? And then this one, PPTP, not one I see too often, but this is actually for uh, VPN. Uh, it, it's basically for uh, VPN tunneling. So, for example, even say say you haven't seen something like this in a while and you don't know what it really is. You just see, oh, PPTP, what does that actually mean? Well, what you can do is you can simply search. It's very easy to to look this stuff up online as well. This is a, a fundamental point that I want to drive home as well. So, say, and you say, like, what is PPTP, for example? And uh, let me turn off my BERT proxy. And try this one again. And you can get good information. Okay, it's point-to-point uh, tunneling protocol, right? It's obsolete nowadays, used for, you know, VPNs, right? Uh, I mean, another way you could research this is TCP port 1723. And you can look up something like this, and it will tell you what this is co- typically corresponding to, a VPN service, right? Um you know, yep, pretty much tells you all this here. It has a number of known vulnerabilities, so this is actually really good information to know here. Um, could also run on UDP port 500 and, you know, these other ports here. Uh, here's how you can actually de- identify certain types of VPNs, like OpenVPN will typically run on 1194 UDP. And it even tells you why, uh, you know, where a lot of these, the issues were with these vulnerabilities and like you can brute force things and yeah, it gives you all kinds of good information. So even if you do know what a, what a particular protocol is, it is still worth it in a lot of cases to Google stuff. Right. And then if you see 3306, that's typically MySQL, which is a database, um, some database software and 3389 is RDP remote desktop. Now this is another one. If I see this, then I pretty much know it's going to be a windows server. And basically what remote desktop is, is it allows you, it's a service that allows you to connect to, I don't know if you ever used remote desktop, right? Go to remote desktop connection and basically it'll open up a window where you're actually remoting into the system and with a full graphical interface where you can just, you know, use it as if you had the computer right in front of you. So that's basically what that is. And VNC is the kind of free version of remote desktop. Uh, Well, I mean, remote desktop isn't paid, but it's a third party. I guess I will say a third party program uh, because remote desktop comes built in with all the Windows servers. But VNC is a uh, a third party uh, application to remote desktop. And you can actually use this on uh, on Linux servers as well. Uh, You can use VNC, right? And you know, both of these have had some, you know, traditional vulnerabilities for it, especially VNC. Uh, there's been some issues in the past. And then port 8080 here, it, it's typically going to be another uh, HTTP server. For example, there's a lot of uh, common web servers that will run on port 8080. Like, for example, if you're dealing with a Apache Tomcat, that's typically running on port 8080. So usually when I see... 8080, I'm thinking uh, it's going to be some additional web server of some kind. But yeah, these are the most common ports. And if a lot of, if this seemed like a lot of information to take in, like I was saying, definitely don't, uh, don't stress it too much. You're going to come across this stuff a lot as you get experience and get hands on with this stuff. And uh, before long, you're going to start recognizing what each of these are. And you'll know, like when you see a certain port is open, you'll know what enumeration commands you need to run next uh, to further figure out how to break into the boxes. So hopefully this video has helped you. If it was, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the like button as well to help get the message out there. And if you want to you know, learn some further stuff, maybe you want to take it to the next level, you can learn what you need to know for OSCP. Even if you don't want to go for OSCP, it's still going to be really good content to help get you hands on. And you know, if not, stay tuned. Pretty soon I'll be coming up with the Nmap video covering all you need to know to get started with that. So I'll see you guys right over in those videos. And thanks for watching as always.